Okay, it's one o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started today. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, second class session for uh, EGME 401. Um, so thank you all for, uh, for coming again. So I, I know uh, there were a lot of uh, technical issues with our activity in the, in the first class. So uh, thank you guys for being patient with that. And, um, you know, um, I, I do have some other activities planned, but I, 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 now that I've seen how that one will go, then uh, I think that'll help you plan for the future. Ones. Okay. okay, so today we have our first, um, I guess, traditional lecture. So this is kind of the, uh, the mode that, um, you know, you'll usually see for the lecture. So you'll see that I'm connected in, in two places. So I'm connected um, on my laptop, first of all, just so uh, you can have the video of me um, talking and having my head down writing on my iPad, um, and mostly for the audio too. Uh, but I, I'm also connected on my iPad, so I can basically use it as like a whiteboard where I can draw notes, um, you know, as if we were in the class. Um, so that's that's generally, you know, the way that I, I, I like to do my lectures. Um, and the nice thing about this iPad thing, too, is that it allows me to basically save all the notes that I write, um, kind of as I, I call them like live lecture notes. And then um, I, I'm going to upload them to the course website after this. So you'll have access to that as well as the lecture recording. Uh, okay, um, so uh, one announcement before we begin today. I, I know that there were a lot of questions about the wait list last time. So uh, I, I talked to the department about that and uh, what they decided to do, just because there were a lot of people trying to get into sections for 401, was that they uh, added five seats to, uh, to the enrollment for every class, uh, for every section of the class. So um, that includes my section. So there were five seats that were added. Um, and I just checked like five minutes ago and it, and it seemed like uh, four of those were already taken. Um, but it was, it was, it was a little bit weird because there's still one seat open in my, in this section, but there were still, but there were uh, four people on the wait list. So I would have thought that they would have added people automatically from the wait list to the class, but um, you know, and may, maybe for some of you it did, but uh, if it didn't, you know, there is one seat open in the class. Um, so I would, uh, I would check that out. So if you're on the wait list, um, check out that, uh, that for you. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and so uh, what you also notice on the screen is that I have the learning objectives for today. Um, so we have a lot planned today. So uh, basically this is going to be our intro lecture to economics. We're going to do a lot of defining terms, defining concepts. Um, so there's kind of a lot of conceptual stuff that we need to go over. Okay. Um, so you can kind of see that here. So there's, this is kind of like the outline for our class today. Uh, but before I get started, um, I wanted to ask, are there just any questions about the class or just anything I can answer before um, we start the lecture? Okay. Uh, so at any time, if there's any questions, you can, uh, you know, stop me anytime. Um, you can send the question to the chat and I'd be happy to answer. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get started. So this um, first um, set of lecture notes, um, if you, if you uh, uh, looked at the notes that are posted online, it's, it's a long set of notes. Uh, usually I don't write notes that are this long, but you know, everything in this section kind of goes together. Uh, so we'll be covering this for uh, at least this, sec this class session and the next one, and maybe a little bit of the one after that. Okay? Um, but the general, um, the general title of this lecture notes is uh, just the concept of interest, equivalence and the time value of money. Okay. So after today, all these will, will make sense. So maybe you're familiar with interest rates just because, you know, if you watch daytime television, you hear, uh, you know, um, commercials for auto loans and all that stuff and you drive on the freeway you see billboards with all that stuff all the time too so maybe interest is something you're familiar with um, but I think equivalence and time value of money are, are uh, two things that maybe you know might be a, a new concept uh, but let's start with just kind of a, a general introduction so you know we talked about this quite a bit on Tuesday um, but you know I think it's worth kind of uh, reiterating it because I think you know a couple a few new people joined the class since then um, but you know it's, it's so it's worth saying that you know, EGME 401 is, is it's not your traditional engineering class because I think most of the engineering classes that are in our curriculum really focus a lot on, you know, your technical skills. Like how do you analyze like a fluid mechanic system? How do you analyze like a structural system? How do you design an HVAC system? How do you design a, uh, um, an airform, right? 
Um, EGME 401, you can kind of think of it as, as a lot of the soft skills that go into, you know, your engineering job that, you know, are not traditionally taught in your, in your science-y classes. Okay. So in particular, you know, what I, what I really want to focus on for 401, and, and I, I, want, I want you guys to keep this in the back of your mind, is that we're going to learn how to make effective um, engineering decisions. And so, you know, they're, they're um, you know, I want to focus on kind of two important factors because, you know, uh, when I say engineering decisions, that's, that's an incredibly broad thing where, you know, of course the science and of course the technical details are important, but this class, you know, we're going to focus on two other aspects that, you know, sometimes are equally as important or more important than the technical details, right? So number one, you know, probably everyone knows this is that for the first part of the class, we're going to focus on economics, right? So your engineering projects, you know, should be economically sound. Uh, it shouldn't bleed your company dry of, uh, of money. Okay. And so the other important consideration is ethics, right? Um, so ethics, you know, it's a very, uh, um, you know, I would say open-ended subject. I think probably the most um, non-technical thing that you'll do as, as, as an engineer, but it, you know, it's important, right? Because uh, if you look through the history books, there's there's so many cases of, you know, engineering projects that have gone wrong where, um, you know, the company might have pushed a product through before it was ready, before it was properly safety tested, you know, and ended up, and ended up killing a lot of people. So we'll go over several stories like that, but, um, you know, we'll kind of save that towards the end of the class. So not only do you need to consider, you know, of course, the science, but you need to consider, you know, economics and ethics. And in this first part of the class, we're going to focus on economics, okay? Okay, um, and you know, uh, I think a fair question to ask is, you know, why do we even need to go over, you know, economics and ethics? Because you know, you're you guys are in school to be engineers, right? So I think a lot of you, you know, especially from the emails that you sent me, you know, a lot of you get you have gotten into engineering just mostly just to do the science, right? You know, it's it's really cool, you know, it's really cool to design like a rocket ship or an airplane um, or write a computer program, right? Um, but um, you know, all that stuff is, is still really important, but, you know, not only are you going to be engineers, but you're also going to be professionals too. Um, and, you know, there's a certain, there's a certain standard or there's a certain expectation that comes with being a professional, especially ones that are designing um, things, um, designing devices, de designing projects that not only will, can have a huge financial impact, but also have a, uh, you know, a huge impact on just society in general. So, as professionals, it's it's kind of the, the expectations that you do, that you do know a lot of this information, so that you can go about so uh, so that people can really trust your report. So that's kind of the motivation, you know, behind this this class, and you know why it's it's part of the required curriculum for uh, you know for engineering students. Okay, okay. Um, so that's kind of the motivation. So let's start, you know, uh, with economics. Um, and so you know, before we dive into economics, we we first need to define some terms. So um, you know, these terms might seem you know really basic, but you know they kind of form the the, the starting point and the baseline for where we need to go. Okay. So let's start with just some basic definitions. Okay. 
first one's really easy, so it's, it's going to be cost. And so a cost is, uh, you know, you probably intuitively know already what a cost is, but, you know, the, the way that we're going to define cost as is it's money that's going to be paid out from you or from your project. So in other words, a, a cost is a, a loss of money. Okay. And so costs are, you know, it's, it's a reality of all engineering projects. So, you know, everyone got a taste of that with the activity on Monday, where if you want to make something, you at least need to buy the parts. Uh, you need to pay for the labor involved. So, uh, you know, and as your engineering project is get more and more complex, you know, you're going to have lots of different costs that you need to manage at the same time. So, you know, it's a, it's a necessary, um, you know, part of your engineering project. So it's, it's good to kind of be familiar with these as much as possible. Okay. All right. Are there any questions on this before I, uh, I turn the page? Okay. And so some examples of cost. would be like purchasing parts or raw materials. Paying for labor. Another thing that's really important for engineering projects is oftentimes, you know, you're, you're managing um, some very, you know, big pieces of expensive equipment. Um, and so oftentimes you need to uh, maintain that equipment. So you need to pay, you know, every now and then for someone to come and check and uh, perform routine maintenance. And so the next definition that we'll go over is the opposite of a cost, which is a um, benefit. Okay. The definition of benefit is a little bit more broad, but for the, the first part of the, the class, you know, we'll consider benefit to be the opposite of cost. So benefit is defined as money that comes in towards you. And, you know, uh, just like the opposite of cost, where a cost is a loss of money, you can think of a benefit as a gain. So some examples of a benefit that, um, that can occur for an engineering project is just, uh, say, you're, you know, you're designing a product that's sold on the market. So every time your product is sold, then you, that's a benefit, right? Another thing that's uh, that's common for engineering projects is that um, you know maybe you uh, you designed a device that uh, is harvesting some kind of material or some kind of resource. So let's say that you designed a wind turbine that's producing energy, and by selling that energy to uh, either consumers or the power company, that's uh, making money as well. Or another, another way to gain a benefit is uh, say, you know, you invested your money like, uh, into a savings account, you know, and you're, gain, and you're gaining interest on that savings account. Right? 
All right, so the question, a couple questions in the chat. So one question is, uh, is there a difference between benefit and revenue? Um, so revenue specifically is, um, you know, your, um, your kind of your, um, the amount of money you take in after a certain period of time. So benefit is, is, more, uh, is more general, I would say. So benefit um, can be all different kinds of cash. Uh, revenue is more, um, you know, specific for, you know, how many, like how much sales did, did you make for a certain time? So revenue is, is you kind of think of it as a type of benefit, but benefit is, is kind of more broad than that because you might have cases where like you might sell a piece of equipment and that's benefit, um, but that might not be considered as revenue because that's, that's not a sale of, a, um, of something that you normally produce. Okay. Um, so the other question is, would metrology be considered a resource? Um, Sure. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I'm, I'm not too familiar with metrology. I, I, I kind of have a basic kind of understanding of it. But so uh, maybe we can talk offline about, um, you know, uh, what what that what that means. Yeah. All right, so we have another question. So does benefit just have to be money or can it be something else? Yeah, that's a great question. So actually, that leads um, into my next point, too, because a lot of times, you know, you're um, depending on where you work, and depending on the kind of work that you do, you know, the benefits that you um, get from a project might not just might uh, not just be monetary. Right. Um, so a great example of this is research. Right. Um, so scientific research just by nature is, is not going to make any money. Right. Uh, so you're pay, you're basically paying scientists to discover something new about the world or to, you know, to improve technology. Right. Um, and so those are those are benefits that can't that are hard to quantify, but they're really important to society. So some of those things could be like a benefit to the environment. Right. So like uh, a company might engage with the project to, you know, plant a bunch of trees. So, you know, obviously that's going to cost the, the company some money um, and, you know, they're not going to get any money for it. They might get positive PR, which, you know, might lead, might indirectly lead to more uh, money, but, just by itself, you know, they're they're paying money to benefit the environment. Okay. Um, another thing could be, you know, improving the quality of life of uh, of humans. So a great example of this would be like public works projects that, uh, you know, that like, the city might undergo to like improve the quality of the roads, you know, fix up some, uh, some parts of the city, right? Um, so those things don't directly make money, but they do improve the lives of the citizens. So, you know, these are important jobs to, to do. So, you know, um, being able to take that benefit into account is, is important for these kinds of projects. Okay. Um, and just like I mentioned before, you know, another benefit could be just advancing the field of science and technology. So a lot of academic research falls into that uh, into that category where you know uh, you know you're paying you're paying researchers to basically discover something new about the world, but it's not going to make any money. Right? Um, so benefits come in a lot of different forms, but for the purpose of, of this class, we're mostly just going to be focused on just the money definition of, of benefits. Um, you know, the other aspects of benefits will um, kind of go over more in the ethics portion. Okay. All right, are there uh, any questions on this before I, uh, I move on? Okay, um, so now that we have the definitions of benefits and costs, um, let's talk about just kind of the, the general goal for a lot of engineering projects, you know, especially for, um, you know, the ones undertaken by uh, private companies. So in general, you know, uh, you want to have bigger benefits than, than costs.
So another way to say this is that your engineering project should be profitable. So it should bring in more money than it took to, you know, to make the project. It doesn't matter all the kinds of positive PR that like Apple or Microsoft, you know, does or Amazon, right? Um, you know, they're not going to engage in a project if they don't think they can make money off it. And that's just kind of the reality of, of that situation, right? Um, so that's, this is something that's always kind of important to, to keep in mind and that, you know, a lot of times when you engage in something for, uh, um, you know, for a company, they're in it to make some money. So, you know, to kind of keep that, to kind of know that ahead of time and to kind of, uh, um, you know, act on that, that will kind of be to your benefit. Um, and so, you know, when, you, when you're considering um, a lot of the non-economic benefits that a project can have, you know, then the situation gets a, a bit more complicated because those things are really hard to quantify, right? Um, you know, it's, it's uh, um, you know, people have very different opinions on, you know, what the economic value of a million new trees are, right? Even though I think we all kind of agree that that's something that's really important for the world. Um, but, you know, quantifying that and, you know, seeing whether that's a worthy investment is, is, uh, you know, um, a bit more difficult when everything, when, you know, in terms of money, everything is within the same, at least system of units, right? So you can all, you can just easily kind of compare the numbers and see whether it's worth it or, or not. Okay. So let's, uh, I just want to go over a couple more definitions. So I know the, uh, the lecture notes have, have, a, has a lot more definitions of like different kinds of costs, but, um, you know, uh, I just wanted to skip that just in the favor of time, but I, I want to go over just kind of uh, two distinctions here. Okay. Okay. So a cost or a benefit that, um, you know, that we're going to go over in this class, um, you know, a lot of those would be recurring. And so when I, when I say recurring, what that means is that the uh, the cost or the benefit will be um, if it occur occurs at regular intervals. So some examples of like a recurring cost would be like the maintenance cost that you pay on a machine, right? You got to pay a guy once a month to come out and in inspect the machine, right? And, uh, and perform any, any fixes. Um, another example of like a recurring cost would be like, you know, paying your, uh, paying your staff or paying your, your labor, right? You have to pay them every other week or once a month or, you know, whatever the, uh, the arrangement is. Um, but the example of like a recurring benefit would be, you know, you know, say that you're, um, you know, you have like a, like a wind turbine or something or, or like a, or an electric generator and you sell that electricity off, you know, every month, then that's a recurring benefit for you as well. So um, recurring, uh, when I say recurring, that what I basically just mean is that the cost and the benefit or the benefit occurs at regular intervals. And so the opposite of recurring is a uh, non-recurring, right? And these are costs and benefits that occur at irregular intervals, or maybe just maybe once or twice. So this, these, um, you know, some some costs and benefits that uh, that fall in this category would be like one-offs. Um, so you know, a lot of times when you start a new project, there's a there's a certain amount of startup cost that's associated with it. Um, you might have to buy some new equipment, or you might have to, you know, uh, expand your lab space or or something like that. Um, so that would be like a one-time cost, like you buy a piece of equipment. Um, so that would be a non-recurring um, a non-recurring uh, cost. A non-recurring benefit would be, you know, say that, you know, you've used this machine for 10 years and now you're ready to sell it um, because your company's not going to use it anymore. So you sell your machine and that's a one-time sale. 
Um, you're not going to keep magically getting more machines. So, you know, you just have one to sell. Um, so that would be like a non-recurring uh, benefit. So um, this, this distinction is kind of uh, really important to keep in mind as we kind of move forward with the, uh, um, with the content. Okay. All right. Are there uh, any questions on, on this before I, uh, I turn the page? Okay, so now let's get into uh, cash flow diagrams. One of the most important concepts um, for this economics section. Okay, so the idea with cash flow diagrams is that, you know, when you're managing a, a really, comp a really, you know, um, complex engineering project, the amount of costs and benefits and everything that's coming in, it, it's, it's going to get really complicated really quickly. So unless you have a, a system in which you can organize all these, uh, all these things, you know, you're going to get lost in the numbers, um, you know, right away. So, um, so a cash flow diagram kind of gives you a visual, the, the idea of a cash flow diagram is to give you kind of a visual representation of all the costs and the benefits that your engineering project is expected to pull in over a certain period of time. Okay. Someone knocked on my door, but I'll get it later. Hopefully it's just an Amazon package or something. Okay, um, and so the cash flow diagram is kind of a, a visual diagram that shows all the costs and benefits throughout the, the cycle of an engineering project, right? Um, so you can think of it, so visually it looks like just a, a segmented timeline, um, but we're gonna add arrows to it to, uh, to indicate some, uh, some cash flows. Okay. So let me just draw just a, a just a quick example, just so you know um, what this looks like. Okay? And so the nice thing about cash flow diagrams is that they look, you know, once you see it, it uh, it's kind of pretty intuitive what they uh, how they work. Okay. So let's say that you know we have a uh, engineering project that takes place over four periods. Um, so this could be four years or four months. So a lot of times, you know, you have, um, it's up to you how you define the, uh, how the, how the segmentations go. Okay. And so one thing to note is that cash flow diagrams always start at time zero. And so time zero always indicates today. So, um, you know, when you draw a cash flow diagram, you start at zero and this is today. And so what you do at, at this point is that you can add, you can now add arrows to this uh, cash flow diagram to indicate, um, you know, either positive or negative cash flow. So benefits will be written above the cash flow diagram as up arrows. So let's say that we have a project where we make seven, uh, $300 um, per month. Okay. 
And what you'll notice is that every time I drew an arrow, it's it's at one of the uh, um, it's at one of the segments, right? Um, so you can have cash flow diagrams where you have cash flows that happen in the middle, um, but that's usually uh, you know a little bit too complicated. So we're basically going to assume that every time you have a cash flow, it's going to occur at the end of a period. So it's going to occur basically at the segments one, two, three, four, you know, however many that you have. Okay. So those are the benefits. So now let's add the costs. So let's say in order to uh, in order to produce this three hundred dollars, we have to pay one hundred dollars every month for you know materials and for upkeep of the machinery. So let's say that we have 100. Okay. And so since all of these costs and benefits, they occur, you know, every month for four months, we can say that these are recurring costs and benefits, right? And so the other thing that's really common that you'll see in these cash flow diagrams is that you'll see a, a large cost at today's time, right? Um, and so let's say that in order to get this project off the ground, we had to pay a thousand dollars just, you know, as kind of like an initial, um, as part of our initial costs. And so what this cash flow diagram represents is that, um, you know, today, if we wanted to engage with this project, so this is kind of like our four month kind of uh, forecast for the future. So if we wanted to engage in this project, we have to pay $1,000 today in startup costs. But, um, you know, every month after that, we'll make $300 in revenue from the project. Um, but we'll also have to pay $100 every month just, in, just to pay for like raw materials and, and the machinery and stuff like that. And so just like that, you know, we, we have this four month forecast, financial forecast for our engineering project. And it's, and it's uh, represented very, you know, concisely and visually with this cash flow. Diagram. All right, are there uh, any questions on this uh, cash flow diagram? Okay, so now let's go over um, kind of the different categories of, of costs and benefits that you that you often see in cash flow diagrams. So uh, we went over a, a couple of these uh, just now, but um, there's there's a few more that we can uh, um, we can talk about. Okay. Okay. And so first, let's talk about the thing that happens at time zero. So this is our first or initial cost. So almost every you know new engineering project will have some kind of initial cost, um, and a lot, a lot of times that's associated with you know buying new equipment, um, installing the new equipment, building maybe something new um, that you need to get started. Um, and so these are usually just a one-time cost to kind of just get you um, get all the infrastructure and get all the machinery that you need to to do your engineering project. And so another category, which is a recurring cost, is the uh, cost that's associated with just operation and maintenance. Okay. Professor. Yeah, I have a question. Why are you always defining the cost as a losing of money? And we like when we we pay for something or buy something, we're gonna like use it later, and we're gonna get benefits from it later. 
So mm-hmm. why would include like as a investment for like later profit? Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, for engineering projects, that's that's what you spend the money to do. So you spend the money to uh, to invest uh, in something so that you're going to make money later. or You're going to get some other benefits. But, um, you know, I, I separate that um, from the I, I separate that from the benefits because the cost is, is just the money that you put out. Um, and then later on, you get some benefits later. But, you know, a lot of times though, those things don't occur in a vacuum. Like you don't just um, throw money away and then, you know, um, expect money to come back to you magically. Like, you know, of course, those things are always going to be correlated. Um, but I just kind of categorize the two as, you know, I just want to say costs are just any any money that you uh, that you pay out and benefits are, are any money that you, you bring in. But oftentimes those two are correlated for a lot of engineering projects. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, so that's operation and maintenance costs. So another cost, uh, we, di- we didn't see this one in the previous example, is uh, salvage value. Um, and so usually at the end of a project's life cycle, so let's say that you know, your, your project is planned for uh, you know, two, two years or three years, you know, you ha- you're gonna have a lot of leftover equipment and uh, uh, maybe some leftover raw materials at the end, right? And so oftentimes what you're going to do is, is not just throw those things in the garbage. You're going to see, you know, can we make some money off this? Can we sell this equipment, you know, to, uh, um, to another, um, you know, to another uh, vendor? Um, or, you know, maybe we can take this apart and sell the parts, right? So you basically want to try to recoup as much of the cost as, as you can. Right? Um, you know, just by the nature of, you know, you've been using this piece of equipment for, you know, three or four years, you're not going to get back your initial cost from it. But at least, you know, you'll make something back. So the other one is revenue. So going back to the, the question from earlier. So revenue uh, specifically is a, is a recurring benefit that occurs through the sale of a product or service. Um, so are there any questions on, uh, on these four um, categories of cash flows? We have one more, but I, uh, I couldn't fit it on this page, so it'll uh, be on the next page. Okay. Okay, so then the last category that's, that's common for engineering project is what's called an overhaul. So an overhaul is a is um, you know it's a it's a cost um, and it's something that might occur either just maybe you need, maybe uh, you know there's a, a major renovation plan that you need to do to complete the project um, or you might need to uh, purchase a new machine or you know purchase a, a major uh, a major repair so it's usually like a one time or two time you know non recurring cost um, that happens throughout the life cycle.
So a lot of times overhauls are, are um, you know, would be things like, um, you know, you need to replace a major part of your machine that you expect is going to break down within a couple of years or, um, you know, uh, some, um, you know, maybe someone big in your company gets fired or, you know, someone leaves the company and you have to hire someone new. So, you know, overhauls are, are you know, generally they're, they're unexpected, but sometimes you can, you can plan for them and, you know, they make their ways into your cash flow. Okay, um, so let's let's kind of put this all together with uh, with an example, okay. just to kind of nail down these these definitions. So we haven't gone over any um, any calculations yet, um, but it's important to really you know get these definitions. Okay. So let's say that you know you, you you work for a wind turbine company and you're considering the the construction of a wind turbine um, for um, generating and selling energy to a local. Town. And so at this point in the, uh, in the project's life cycle, you know, the engineers have, have done all their analysis. They've done all the predictions on, you know, depend on, you know, you, you already have a location plan for this wind turbine. So you know the wind patterns and everything there. So there's already been a, uh, um, an analysis of, you know, how much money each, each part can, can bring. So let's, uh, let's summarize the numbers. Okay? Um, and so to build this wind turbine, there's going to be an initial cost of $80,000. Um, in addition, um, for every year that the wind turbines in uh, in service, it's expected to cost nine thousand dollars in maintenance. And then over a, a six-year lifespan, so the, 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 the wind turbine is expected to last six years, um, it's expected to produce enough energy that you can sell for $24,000 a year. And so since that's our recurring benefit, this $24,000 will be our revenue. And so at the end of the six year life cycle, what's expected is that, uh, you know, you can sell the wind turbine for $10,000. And so, um, you know, the problem has already kind of laid out all the costs for us, so and and, and all the benefits. And so, uh, what what um, what this problem asks you to do is that one, you need to draw the uh, the cash flow diagram. Does that say the end of six years? Yeah, uh, six years, correct. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, um, you know, we're, I'll, I'll show you kind of a, another way that you can um, display the cash flows, which um, this, this will be more useful once we get to taxes later on. Um, but we can also draw a cash flow tape. Okay. So it just presents the same information, but just in table form um, instead of a uh, timeline. Okay, 
Um, any questions on the on the problem setup before we start on the cash flow diagram? Okay. Okay. Um, so for the cash flow diagram, we first need to define um, you know how many tick marks that we need. So we know that we're going to uh, have this wind turbine in operation for six years. Okay. And so we're going to need seven. Uh, we're going to need seven check, uh, seven tick marks on our on our diagram. Okay. Let me draw it down here. Okay. So remember, we always start at zero because that's a uh, present day. And then we go up to six years. Okay, so we have one check mark for today, and then one check mark for uh, all the other uh, years. Okay, and so let's start adding the uh, um, all the costs and benefits from the uh, from the problem statement. Okay, and so from from the problem statement, we know that we have an initial cost of eighty thousand dollars, and so uh, initial cost we represent at time zero. So that's going to be eighty thousand dollars. That's uh, um, you know right at, at time zero. So that's the cost that's associated with building our wind turbine. Okay. Next, let's put in our maintenance costs. So our maintenance cost, remember, is a recurring cost that recur that occurs at the end of every year of operation. And in this case, our maintenance cost is ninety uh, nine thousand dollars per year. This is a lot easier on a real whiteboard when I have uh, more space, but I have to just kind of squeeze everything in here. Okay. Okay. So that's our uh, yearly costs. Um, and then, so now let's do our uh, yearly revenue. So we, we uh, know from the problem statement that we expect to make $24,000 in revenue just by selling the energy from the, the wind turbine. Uh, but so we're not done yet. So the, the problem gave us one more benefit that we can expect, which is at the end of the of year six, which is you know when we're done using this wind turbine, we can expect to sell it for ten thousand dollars. So let's so let's modify this last one here. So instead of twenty four thousand and a same size arrow, let's make it a little bit bigger, and then let's make this ten thousand plus twenty four thousand, which is thirty four thousand dollars. And so this right here is our cash flow diagram for the wind turbine, which um, kind of summarizes all of the cash flows that um, you know we expect to occur. Okay? Um, so it has our initial costs, it has our maintenance costs, all of our yearly uh, revenues, and the salvage value at the, at the end. Okay? Professor. Yep. Is revenue the same as profit? Like, does revenue already consider the cost, like the nine thousand dollars? Yeah, so it's so it's a little bit different. So profit in this case would be that you're twenty four thousand minus the nine thousand per year. Um, so revenue is revenue is just the money that you take in. Profit is the revenue minus the cost. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, it's confusing. I think you know. I think these are all terms that maybe you guys have um, that you guys have heard before. But um, yeah, formalizing it I, I think is important because you know there's there's a lot of different terms for these these things. Uh, okay. Um, so that's the cash flow diagram. So then now let's go over the cash flow table, right? Um, so depending on, you know, how much you like tables and how much you like um, diagrams, you know, you might like one more than the other. Um, but here's, uh, but here it basically is, okay? So cash flow tables are nice because uh, you can do them in Excel. Okay. So it's, uh, we'll do three different columns. Okay. 
So I have one column for time, uh, another column for costs, and another column for benefits. Okay. And we'll make one we'll make one row for every uh, time period that we uh, that we need, um, so that we have our six years and also um, year zero, uh, which is our initial time. Okay. And then from here, we basically just write out um, you know the costs and the benefits that we expect for each year. And so since we already have the cash flow diagram written out, um, all this is is just a matter of just copying that information. Okay? So our initial cost, we already know, is uh, $80,000. And so we can represent that as a minus $80,000. Okay? And so, uh, um, and you can see from our cash flow diagram, we haven't made any money yet in year zero. So that's, that's typical. Um, so when you, you're first building a project, um, you know, you're not supposed to make money off it right away. So oftentimes in year zero, we'll have kind of just this, uh, this uh, dash mark just to indicate, you know, we haven't made any money yet. Okay. okay. And then every year from here, um, you know, we have our maintenance costs. So our maintenance costs are going to be minus $9,000. Um, professor? Yeah. Why is there a maintenance cost at the end of the six years, even though, isn't that when you're selling it? So why would there be that cost? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, one of the assumptions that we make from the, from the cash flow diagram is that all, we just put all the costs and the benefits at the end of the year. Um, and so, you know, through between um, years five and six, you know, we're still using the, the wind turbine. So, um, you know, we, maybe we can say that the maintenance occurred maybe halfway through the year, like in June or something. Um, but just for kind of simplicity, just so all our arrows are in the same place, we just put them all towards the end. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. I'll, you know, why, why would you want to uh, maintain it if you're just going to sell it off anyway? But, you know, just like your house, right? It, it, always, it always helps to make, properly maintain your house because if you have like a broken sink or a broken, uh, you know, uh, windows, then your house isn't going to sell as much. So it's, it's, it's to your benefit more to, to better maintain something so you can sell it for a higher price. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, and then we can write in all of our benefits. Okay. And we have 34,000 at the end because that's the, uh, we get an additional 10,000 for selling our, our machine. Okay, so uh, so both of these are, uh, are 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 you know good representations. So they're they're kind of nice ways to organize all the cash flows for this. This is still kind of you know as you can imagine a relatively simple example. Um, you know, um, more bigger engineering projects will have a lot more costs and a lot more benefits. But this is mostly just to illustrate you know how do you set up a cash flow diagram and how do you set up a cash flow table, um, and you know what are the benefits of, of these. Are there uh, any questions on on this example before we uh, we move on? Okay, um, so that's cash flow diagrams. Um, and so the next concept that we're gonna go over is the time value of money. And so the whole idea with time value of money is that you know, the, the money that you have, um, you know, either in your pocket or in your bank account or, or whatever, the value of that changes with time. And so to kind of illustrate this, I, I want to uh, give you kind of like a hypothetical situation, okay? And so uh, in, this, in this hypothetical situation, you have two choices, okay? Um, you have the red pill and the blue pill. No, I'm kidding. 
So, you know, in this hypothetical situation, you can either, you know, say like I have this hundred dollar bill in, uh, in my hand, right? So you, I can either give you this hundred dollar bill right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> or um, the other, the other option is that I can take this hundred dollar bill um, I can just stash it away somewhere and then I'll give it to you in a year. Okay. There's going to be no interest on it, on it, whatever. So, you know, the, uh, if you choose option two, you just get like a letter, a random letter from me said, here, here's, here's your hundred bucks that I promised you a year ago. Right. Um, so, you know, when you're given these two options, you know, what's, what's kind of the more, um, what's the more sensible thing to, to pick, right? Or what would you guys pick? Uh, right now? Yeah, right now, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you know, this $100 is not gonna get any better, you know, you want the $100 right now, right? Because if you get the $100 right now, you can actually do something with it, right? Like you can pay for, um, you know, maybe like a video game or something, or you can, even what you can do is you can take that 100 bucks, you can invest it, um, in a, in a bank account. And then in that year that you would have just been waiting, your hundred dollars would have been uh, grow. Okay. And so that's the whole idea with the time value of money is that, um, you know, any cash that you can, that you can possibly have, it has more value to you, um, now or sooner rather than later. And so the best thing would be is that, you know, if you can have cash that's available now, then that's, that's the best thing. Okay. And so for the reason for that is, you know, if you have the money that's available now, you can, you can actually do something with it. Okay. And so companies are the same way. So, you know, just because, um, you know, I know we did, we did kind of a small example with a hundred bucks, but companies are exactly the same way. So if you give them the option to, um, you know, have like, you know, hundred thousand dollars right now versus a hundred thousand dollars in the future, you know, 10 times out of 10, they're going to pick hundred thousand dollars right now so that they can actually take that money. They can invest it in a project. They can buy some new equipment. They can, um, you know, pay their employees, you know, whatever they, they need to do. Right. Um, Um, I'm, I'm reading through the comments. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I'll, yeah, another, another good point is inflation too, but uh, inflation we'll, we'll cover later in the semester. So inflation is kind of its own thing. Uh, but that's also a, a great point too. <laughs> um, but you know, um, but anyway, you know, the, the idea with this is that, you know, money has a value. I mean, even regardless of, of, of um, regardless of inflation or not, you know, money has more value to you, you know, sooner rather than later because, because you can use it. Right? Okay. Uh, and so another reason why, you know, money has a time value is, is this whole concept of interest, right? Okay. And so the whole idea with interest is that, um, you know, you can take money that you have right now and you can invest it in something, right? Um, you could either, it could be as something as simple as like, you know, putting money in your savings account. And then over time, what's going to happen is that money is going to grow. Okay. And so our, our next uh, our next topic is going to be you know how do we uh, how do we do interest calculations? Okay. 
All right, are there uh, any questions on this before I, uh, I move on? Okay. So interest is, is, is a really important concept for, uh, for engineering projects. And, you know, the reason for that is, you know, you don't start and end an engineering project, you know, within like a week, right? So it's very different from like a school assignment. Um, you know, so, um, you know, a lot of times engineering projects will take place over several months. At the very least, they're, they might take place over several years, right? And so over that time, you know, the company is investing a lot of money into your into your project because you have you know first of all they have to pay you the engineer um they also have to pay for all the uh, all the materials and they have to pay for you know all the equipment right and so you know in order to uh to, to better assess or to in order to assess whether your project is going to be profitable what your company is going to do is that they're going to take they're going to consider all the costs that are that need to go into your project and then compare that say you know if we took that money and we just invested it in you know um you know, say we just put into a bank account, right? Are we going to make more money by putting our money in the bank account versus your project, right? So that's that's kind of a, a very kind of a baseline, um, um, you know, uh, comparison to make for your engineering projects. And so another way that we'll use interest rates um, that we'll see later on is that, you know, after you, after you've computed like all the benefits and everything from your projects, so like, you know, say that we have our wind turbine. Um, one thing that we can do is we can compute, you know, um, you know, considering all the money that we're going to make from this project, considering our initial investment and the, and the maintenance costs, um, you know, what, what, what is the theoretical interest rate that we gain from this project? Or in other words, you know, what's the percentage that our initial investment is going to grow by investing in into this engineering project, so this concept of interest is going to be, you know, really useful on, on kind of multiple fronts um, for kind of assessing the uh, um, the the economic performance of your engineering projects. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk more about interest. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you're an engineering project or even as an individual, um, you know, everyone knows that money is, it is an extremely valuable resource. So it's so valuable that often people are, are, are willing to pay more money to have some money more, so to have some money on hand right now. And so this is the basic concept of a loan, right? So for, for a loan, you know, you ask the bank or you ask, um, you know, maybe your friend or something to give you some money to be available right now. And, uh, but the whole idea for the loan is that, you know, you pay back, eventually you're going to pay back the loan over time. Um, but in addition to the initial amount that you borrowed, you need to pay some, um, some additional ones, some additional money on top of that. And that's the, the interest.
And so the, uh, the initial amount for the, uh, uh, for the loan is, is often given the name principal. Okay? Um, so that's the, that's the amount. So say you borrowed, you know, like, a, like 10 bucks from your friend. So the $10 would be the principal for that loan, right? And interest is just anything that you pay on top of that um, to, to that person. So um, they can make some money off the loan and, uh, um, you know, uh, and to account for kind of the, uh, the time value of, of money. Okay, so let's do uh, let's do just a, a very simple example. Okay. Okay. So let's say that um, you know your friend comes up to you and says that he has this uh, um, you know great new business idea, uh, but he needs some money just to get it off the ground. Okay, so your friend is asking to borrow five thousand dollars from you uh, to start a new business. And so that, um, and so what he promises you is that you know he knows that his his business is going to be profitable, um, as do every entrepreneur, right? Um, you know this this new company is going to make it big. I just know. Um, and so what he says is that at the end of five years he'll pay you back the five thousand dollars plus an eight percent interest um, every year. And so the question um, for this is, you know, at this rate, you know, how much interest would you earn over the five years, and what is uh, what ex and how much will your friend pay you at the end of five years? Is it an eight percent interest? Yes, eight uh, percent. Okay, uh, so first let's co let's compute the uh, the interest. Okay, um, so the interest rate is eight percent, and so what's going to happen is that every year your friend has to pay you eight percent of the initial loan. Okay, so our initial loan here was five thousand okay. dollars. So in order to compute eight percent of this, we do uh, we just multiply by zero point zero eight. Okay, and so. Um, each period, basically, your friend is going to pay you $400 per year that he's using your money just in pure interest. So um, the way you can think of this is that you're going to be making $400 per year on your $500 investment. Okay? And so if we multiply this by five years, okay, the total amount of interest that your friend is going to pay you is $2,000, okay? So pretty uh, pretty straightforward. So it's just, uh, you know, multiplying numbers. Okay? And so if we add this to the initial cost of the, uh, or the initial principal of the loan, right? So we add this to 5,000. This means at the end of five years, your friend is gonna give you one lump sum of $7,000.
And so, you know, you can basically think of this as, um, you know, your, pen, your friend is paying you $7,000 in order to have $5,000 on hand today, right? So in, uh, in five years, you know, you're going to get $7,000 for the $5,000 that you invested. So you're sacrificing some money that you have on hand now in order that you can have more money later, okay? And so if you're going to sacrifice some money right now, you know, you should get some kind of return on your investment. And this is what that return is for, for this one. Right, so the question is, uh, so there's a couple questions in the chat about you know, whether this is um, non-compounding interest. So, uh, so that is correct. So this interest is non-compounding. So basically the, uh, that 8% that you got each year was based solely on your initial investment. Um, but um, in reality, you know, actually the one that's used more often is compounding interest. So basically at the, so what that means is that at the end of year one, you know, instead of owing you $5,000, your friend is gonna owe you 5,400. Um, and so the interest rate for year two is going to, the interest for year two is going to be more than the interest for year one, right? And so for year two, in order to comp uh, compute the interest, you would do the original principal plus the, uh, the interest that you owe, that you earned from last year. And this would be, um, how do you get a calculator? 5,400 times one, zero eight, 432. So I think, so we're just about out of time today. So we're, we're going to go over compounding interest next time. Um, but this is a, this is basically a non-compounding interest problem. You're absolutely right. Which is actually not that common in reality. In reality, uh, you know, because a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the agencies that give you these loans are banks um, and the banks are going to try to make as much money off, off you as possible, basically. Um, so they, they're going to want to do a compounding interest. Okay, are there uh, any questions on, on this example? Okay, um, so we have a couple minutes, so I, I do wanna um, bring your guys' attention to something, right? So let me share my laptop screen. Okay. And so if you've had me for an instructor before, um, you know that I like to do these things called minute papers. Okay? And so what the minute papers are is, is basically a way for me to kind of assess, you know, how you guys, you know, understood the, 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 the material for this week. Um, so, you know, I think traditionally for a lot of uh, professors, the only way that they can assess um, your guys' learning is through your homework assignments, through quizzes, through exams and stuff like that, which, you know, I don't really like because all those things are graded and, they, and they're like kind of stressful. And so what I thought of is, you know, we can do these like minute papers, which are basically a, an ungraded survey, right? And so to access this, you go to the uh, course website, you go to quizzes here, and then you click on minute paper for week one. Okay? And, uh, um, you know, this, this uh, minute paper is not graded. Um, it's totally anonymous, so I, I won't know who wrote what. It's basically just a way for me just to see, you know, as a whole, you know, how's everyone doing with the material so far, so. Um, I know there's not going to be much to talk about this week just because, um, you know, we had just the course introduction on um, Tuesday. Um, but basically, the minute papers are always going to consist of three questions. So question one is always going to be, you know, what you thought was the most important point from the lecture this week. Question two was, what do you think was the muddiest or the most confusing point? Okay. And so these questions are really important for me just to see if everyone got the most important point. If, you know, and if there's anything that's confusing everyone, I can come back and, and, uh, and you know, reiterate it next week. And then question three is, um, you know, do you have any feedback for the class um, so that it can be improved going forward? So this one's really important to me just because, you know, this is uh, the first time we're doing all virtual. So, you know, I'm always open to feedback and I'm always open to, you know, making adjustments that will be beneficial to everyone. Okay? Um, so if you guys can fill out this survey, you know, that would be great. But, um, you know, it's not graded. So it's, uh, um, you know, it's not a requirement at all. But, you know, the more people that fill this out, the more useful it's going to be for me. And I think the better experience we're all going to have in this class uh, together. Right. So if you're on the wait list, um, you know, uh, try to try to see if you can uh, enroll in the class. I think there is still one spot open at the beginning. Um, but if not, um, what I've been told from the department is that if you're still on the wait list and there's no more space, then you might have to join a, another section, especially one that's that's open. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the quizzes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's under quizzes, but it's a uh, um, but it's um, not a. Uh, it's not graded, so um, it's going to be, it's an ungraded survey, totally anonymous. Okay, okay. Uh, are there any final questions um, before we uh, take off for the week? 
Is that right? I just have a question from the first midterm. Yep. Mm -hmm. On your syllabus, it says Thursday, September 29th, but that's a Tuesday. Do you mean the, no, you mean October 1st or? Um, yes, I would, I mean October 1st. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The exams will, the exams will always be on a Thursday. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So if there's no more questions, then um, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to say uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you on Tuesday. Thanks, Professor. Yep. Thank you, guys. Professor, when will you post uh, this video? So I, I start uploading basically right after the lecture. Um, it just takes YouTube a while to process it because it's a, it's a long video. Um, another thing I, I like to do is I, I, join, I join the lecture 15 minutes early, but then I, I trim that out from the, uh, from the recording too. So that it takes a bit of time for YouTube to process that. So you can, you, you can usually expect it a, a few hours after the lecture ends. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Professor. Hey. Um, I have a question for, um, is there a definition for principal that we need to know? Yeah, principal is the initial uh, amount of money that you, um, that you invest in a loan. Um, so, you know, whenever you oh, get okay. a loan, um, you know, you, uh, uh, whatever money that you receive, um, it's, it's kind of, it's the same on whether on your, you're either on the receiving side of the loan or you're on, you're on the giving side of the loan. So the, uh, the principal is just the initial money that's given out. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Looks like there's some exchange of uh, of IGNs going on in the chat, so I'll, I'll leave it up for a bit longer. Are there uh, any other questions? No, what games are you playing right now? Uh, right now, I'm not, I'm not really playing much because I've been kind of under the weather. Um, but uh, last one I finished was the Persona 5 um, back at the end of July. Uh, I really enjoyed that one. Um, but I haven't really been playing much since then um, just because I, I, I was sick for almost the entire month of August. And I'm, st I'm still feeling it a little bit right now. Yeah, getting a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> I drink like somewhat. I actually need to go pee really bad right now. So... <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Yeah, sorry, we're holding you up. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. All right, who wants to make the Discord server? Yo, I'm working on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> wait, how, wait, why don't we just add like a voice room in in this in the classroom Discord? <laughs> Oh wait, do we, we have a classroom Discord for this? Oh my god, four fourteen. Oh no, no, we don't have a class Discord. Wait, do we have a class Discord for this? Uh, we we have a the class Discord, but like um, it doesn't have a voice chat room in it. It's just chat. It's just text. Uh, I, I think you can find it in the syllabus. Oh yeah, yeah okay, I got it. Wait, no, no, no. You you wait. I, that, 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 that was not my Valorant name. That was um, my Discord name, bro. That's a Discord name, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, you good. You good. Just add me on Discord, and I'll send a Valorant after. Hey, just, just yeah, we can make a new room. We can make a new server. All right, all right let's do that right we'll now. Put in the, uh... Damn, that's so sad. Wait, you you do it, and then you add us. How about that? Okay, I'll figure it out. Accept. Uh, All right, I got Samson. <laughs> this is hella funny. <laughs>